thank you for uh, the opportunity given me this afternoon. I will not be staying too long. My family has to visit. My father-in-law is not well, so he's in the hospital and we need to visit. Um, I want to thank all of you for uh, participating in the Voice of Youth. I see that some of the... I went out with the team that visited in the Pampanga and then the Bataan area. Mukhang wala pa sila rito. Malayo pa siyang Pampanga at saka Bataan eh. <laughs> and it was wonderful. Oh, here we have one. Uh, in Hermosa, no? Hermosa kayo na no? Ah? Orion. Orion, yeah, Orion, okay. The Orion uh, area. And so it was nice to see them. Young people, we, I want to let you know that we are proud of you and we are happy that we have a, a, an army of young people. We wish the army is bigger, but it always starts with something small. Last night, most of the time, I don't go to Vespers because it's my prayer, special Sabbath prayer. Last night, I was reading about, the, I'm reading a book now about empowered church leadership. And last night, it was a chapter on the church needs to be apostolic. That in the book, in the Gospel Commission, although the commission begin, the focuses on making disciples and to teach the nations all of the things that Jesus observed. Are you familiar with that Matthew 28? The first part of the verse says, go. And the author was saying, how much the church has forgotten that the first part of our mission is to be apostolic, to be missionary, to go to places where people do not know about the Lord Jesus Christ yet. When I was reflecting on it and what is happening in AUP now, we are spending so much money on our youth ministry. Dapat naman siguro, because if our young people are not strong, then who will go? And yet, we are not going out enough. We have so many organizations. Are you aware that our young people, many, many of our students are not joining religious activities because they are in singing groups? Yeah, about 800 of our students are in singing group, much more than those who are going out for Voice of Youth. And most of the time, they are practicing on Sabbath afternoon so that they can sing one song for five minutes and they practice for four hours <laughs> and they spend so much money on uniforms I've been encouraging them to go to go out and not just stay inside and practice and practice and practice and sing for a few minutes and practice again you know we need to focus our resources on going out and last night I was crying because I realized I, you know, I had several conversion turning points in my life. One was when I was graduating from high school, and one was here in AUP. This is a special place for me. When I was graduating from college, from ministry, and with my friends, two of them took medicine, actually. Uh, I had no friends, unfortunately, at that time, who was ministerial. We would spend hours praying that the Lord will use us wherever we are after graduation. In fact, right after graduation, I applied to Central Luzon Conference and I wrote there that please send me to Palawan. But they did not send me Jen to Palawan. <laughs> they sent me to Pasig instead. Letter P. Nagkamali yata kung di ko naintindihan yung place eh. I thought it's Palawan. Pasig pala. Anyway, you know, the desire to serve the Lord and to sacrifice one's life. And I want to tell you, and I was telling the Lord last night, have I forgotten that? Have I forgotten what I promised to the Lord many years ago? I mean, have I lost my focus that the church is first of all apostolic? Or if you want to use uh, present term now, missional or missionary 
And I'm so happy that many of you still have that spirit. And I pray, young people, that the vision that God has given you in your age now, do not forget it. And I'm praying that the dream that you have now, your passion that you have now, and it's not just a passion because you have made it happen. I remember our chorister, you were the president of the Voice of Youth team last year, weren't you? And who is the president now, Howard? Okay. So I see many of you are here again and again and again. How much we need to fulfill the missionary task. Look at our community here. From San Pedro to Batangas City, millions of people are there. The southern, the southern bedroom of Metro Manila. And yet, what are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing? In our division, we have the Philippines who has many Adventists, and yet we also have millions of Filipinos who have not yet heard about Jesus. Many of the growing churches that we see in the Philippines, Protestant churches, are actually not reaching new people. They are just Protestants transferring to a better church, to a better preacher, to a, to a better exciting worship service. They are not really converting Catholics very much. So it's a big challenge for us. Many of the Adventist churches that we have, PIC is one. We are not growing much. Our baptisms do not come from our non-Adventist students. They come from our Adventist children. So that's in my heart. Uh, sometimes I am impatient when to get things done. But when as president I analyze what's going on. And we are hoping that in the next few years, the voice of youth will morph, will transform itself. Not just to be a reaping meeting, reaping program where you only go for two weeks. But it will be transformed to a church planting movement. Huh? It will be transformed into a missionary movement where we work full time. It will be, it will be transformed into a movement where many of you and your friends will plant churches in the urban areas of Metro Manila. We have, so, you know, from the Taguig, are you aware from the Taguig area to the Taguig, uh, no, from, yeah, Taguig, and then you you move to Pasig, and then to, what's next to Pasig along the Laguna Lake? Uh, Kainta, is it Kainta? And then you move to Taytay, and then Agono. There are so many communities there who have not heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Henibago has that vision, and I'm convincing the administration to have that vision, if we can put our money so that our young people can go out to those areas Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, and then we go out during the two weeks school breaks to do intensive work in the communities that we visit week after week after week. What a wonderful opportunity if our voice of youth will have a better strategy and it will be transformed into long-term mission work. Unfortunately, I am the president now. Sometimes I envy Pastor uh, Henebago with his work. Sometimes I wish I am back to being youth pastor of PIC so that I can work with the young people. But the Lord sends us where we are needed now. So, uh, uh, but I am happy that you have that vision and may the Lord God continue to bless you. And may the Holy Spirit plant in your heart a vision of the work that is left undone. It's, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that makes us dissatisfied. Are you aware of that? We are not happy with the way things are done. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Things are done. And so we have a dream. We have a plan that we will do bigger things and greater things for the Lord. May God continue to bless you in your zeal in your commitment to him, I am sure you, you learned a lot of things. But I, as, I have, as I have learned in my experience, this is planting time for dreams. 
And many of you are privileged because your dreams are becoming true. But more importantly, I look forward to the time as you grow stronger in your faith, as you mature, as the Lord, as you surrender yourself to the Lord more and more. And then the Lord will nurture your talents and then your fruits will become greater and bigger and more and more. You'll be surprised. The dreams that you had in college will become powerful realizations for God's glory as you continue to surrender your life to Him. May God bless you.